fall of an axe against wood, the bark of a dog, the crackle of a campfire, the chattering of squirrels, the pecking of a sapsucker, the slapping of water against a river bank, or the sound of the play of leaves turning silver gray green in the breeze, a shh like whispered secrets for the bees to carry off. Okay, I know we already read that page, but I thought we would review. I'm sorry, but this is part two of uh, module 5.2 HMH lesson. The video cut off and it didn't let me go back and edit it, so I just had to make a new one. So that was part one. Here's part two, okay? So this is where we left off. Let's read this one more time. The moon shone on the snow until the land glowed like a pearl. The stars glinted in the sky and the candles flickered from their lamps. The moon shone on the snow until the land glowed like a pearl. What did the word say? The, the land glowed like a pearl. Let's write that down in our greeting graphic organizer right here. The land glowed like a pearl. Where is it? There it is. So we're going to write that right here. That's what the words say. The land glowed like a pearl. Please please write this down in your head. I mean, write it down on the paper, but I don't want to hear you talking. It's confusing me and everyone else around you. The land glowed like a pearl. What did they really mean when they said the land glowed like a pearl? Look in the picture. What do they really mean? Uh, Rena, thank you for raising your hand. Do you guys know how a pearl looks? Very good. It's all white. It's all white and shiny. How does a pearl look? White and shiny. Very good. So what the word really means is that the land was white and shiny. Let's write that down here. The land was white and shiny. White. And shiny like a pearl, right? Mm It is white and shiny like a pearl. And in this quiet, tree bough tangled world, the world before the cement was poured and the lights turned on, there lived a man of his time, John Chapman, better known as Johnny Appleseed. What do they mean before the cement was poured and the lights turned on? Back a long time ago, was there cement on the pavement, on the floors? Like there is now? No, there wasn't. It was just woods and land, right? Were there lights, car lights or street lights? No, they always had to carry around like fire, right? Like fire on a stick. It wasn't lamps. They didn't have lamps. Lanterns, very good. Lanterns that had a candlestick in them. All right, let's read. The tales of Johnny Appleseed are three parts legend, one part fact. Stories we're not sure are true. But the man, John Chapman, was real. He was born on September 26th, 1774, in Massachusetts. Who do you guys think this baby is? Very good. And who is this kid? And who's this grown adult? Very good. He never drove a car or sent a basketball flying through a hoop. He never acted in front of a camera. He never wore metal. He grew apples and offered them to the pioneers heading west. But wait, so what? A farmer? Why should we remember him today? 
more than two hundred years later, and call him a hero. I will whisper the answer to you, a secret silver-gray-green. He lived by example. Look, are they wearing shoes? No, a long time ago they didn't really have shoes. What did, what do did they mean by he lived by example? That means when he told people that they should do it, he also did it too. He was he he did something, he was the example and everyone else did what he did. And of the many footsteps he took across the frontier and his bare and knobby feet, he left five for us to fill. Use what you have. Share what you have. Respect nature. Try to make peace where there is war. You can reach your destination by taking small steps. So these are the five advice that he gave us, right? Use what you have. Share what you have. Respect nature. Try to make peace where there is war. You can reach your destination by taking small steps. That means you don't have to be in a rush all the time. Slow down. No one is certain why he began his work of planting apple trees. He claimed that spirits and angels told him to be a messenger of peace and to grace the way to the West with an offering of fruit. What we do know is that by doing the same small act of planting seeds every day, Johnny Appleseed changed the landscape of our nation. Seed by seed, deed by deed. So he changed the landscape. What does that mean? Look, what are these? What kind of trees? They're all apple trees. Very good. What examples did he plant for us? Use what you have. Most apples around the start of the 19th century were grown from making cider. John Chapman started his nurseries of apple trees by obtaining apple seeds from owners of cider presses in western Pennsylvania, who were just going to throw the seeds away. Chapman dressed in coffee and potato sacks, or wore used clothing that was given to him by people trading for his trees. Some say he carried his tin cooking pot on his head like a hat. He had a style all his own. So he used what he had. He didn't go out and buy clothes. He had an old potato sack. He made a shirt out of it. He had a pot. He made a hat out of it. The pants are old pants that someone gave him. He traded for one of his apple trees. Share what you have. Chapman was rich in coin and rich in friends. He sold and traded trees to pioneers, but if a per What do they mean by he was rich in coin and rich in friends? That means he what? Hold on, raise your hand, Dominique. He had a lot of friends and had a lot of money. It means he had a lot of money and a lot of friends. If you've seen him in this picture here, does it look like he has a lot of money? Could not afford them. No, Chapman. hold on, I'm sorry. Does it look like he has a lot of money? No. no, he's wearing a potato sack. No, but he lives by example. He uses what he has. He doesn't go out and buy new stuff, not because he doesn't have money. He has a lot of money, but he's teaching people to be resourceful. And he's also rich in friends, which means he has a lot of friends. Let's write that down. Rich in coins and rich in friends. We're going to write that down right here. Rich in coins and rich in friends. What does that really mean? He has a lot of money and a lot of friends, right?
He has a lot of money and a lot of friends. Share what you have. Chapman was rich in coin and rich in friends. He sold and traded trees to pioneers, but if a person could not afford them, Chapman would still allow that person to take saplings and pay when and if he or she was able. Chapman had eleven brothers and sisters, and they helped one another out when they could. Besides his love of apples, Chapman also had a strong affection for reading, especially books by a religious man named Emanuel Swedenborg, who preached love, tolerance, and faith. It was said that John Chapman used his open shirt as a pouch to carry his books. It was also said that he ripped books into chapters in order to circulate them between settlers. He liked to gather children and their families around him and delight them with the story time, news right fresh from heaven. In this way, he was the frontier's first librarian. That's cool. So what did he use his shirt for? Carry books, like a pouch. Respect nature. John Chapman lived most of his life outdoors. He was a vegetarian and also had a vast knowledge of herbs and their uses. Besides planting apples, John Chapman liked to plant fennel, a bulb that smells strongly of licorice and that he believed had medicinal powers. In some parts of the country, this fast-spreading plant is still called Johnny Weed. Dog fennel, also it's called Johnny Weed. It's kind. Of, it's a kind of weed. Johnny. Johnny. His name no. is that his name Johnny. It's a dog <laughs> no, it says Johnny Weed. No, All right. Anyway, I'm dog. I'm gonna keep going. Called Johnny Weed. Penny Royal. Mullen. It is said that he lived in peace with the animals. Legend has it that he released a wolf from a trap, and for a long time afterward, the wolf tamely followed him wherever he went. That's cool, right? Once he slept at one end of a log, with the bear and her cub at the other. Another time, when he noticed that his campfire was singeing the wings of mosquitoes, he doused the flames in order to save the insects. He saw that he was killing mosquitoes, so he put the fire out to save the mosquitoes. When he saw that an animal was being abused, he would buy that animal, nurse it back to health, and find it a good home. The only animal he was known to have killed was a rattlesnake. Though he acted in self-defense, he was said to have always felt badly for having taken that life. The Native Americans respected him for his spiritual bond with his surroundings, his kinship with all that grew and lived. So he was really good with nature. Even the rattlesnake that he killed, he killed it because the rattlesnake was going to harm him, so he was just defending himself. But even with that, he still felt that. Try to make peace. John Chapman moved freely between Native American and pioneer communities, and he was trusted by both. I sow while others reap, where there is war. He warned each side of the other's impending attack, usually by walking through a room and reciting a mysterious rhyme. Be sure my warning keep. So he's warning them of a war, right? He's trying to keep peace between them. John Chapman journeyed hundreds of miles across state lines on his own two feet, or by canoe on the waterways, planting and maintaining his tree nurseries over a hundred thousand square miles. His trees flowered and fruited across the Ohio River Valley, and they were shared and carried off to homesteads far and wide. You can reach your destination by taking small steps. He grew so many apple trees that chances are any apple you eat today is from a descendant of a tree planted by Johnny Appleseed. 
That's so cool. After catching pneumonia during an especially cold winter in 1845, John Chapman passed away. His sweet spirit lives on in the apples we eat and in the seeds we plant to make our country and our world a better place. He passed away with pneumonia. What's pneumonia? That's easily treated nowadays. What is it? It's like a heavy cough you get in your throat. It's kind of, but um, you get it from being out in the cold too much, right? And it can be contagious. Maybe you got it from someone else. Who knows? Seed by seed, deed by deed, Johnny Appleseed changed the landscape of a nation. And now it's your turn. One small deed every day. What's... Seed by seed, deed by deed. That's cool. Deed are good things you do. Seed will you plant? What seed will you plant? What do they mean by what seed will you plant? What good deed will you do? That's what they mean. Okay, what good thing will you do? It's not literally what seed will you plant. Are you really going to go plant a cucumber seed? Are you really going to go plant a pear tree? No. What they mean by that is what kind of good deed will you do, right? Let's write that down. What seed will you plant? What seed will you plant? Let's write that down here. Okay, please in your head. Thank you. What seed will you plant? What they mean is what good deed will you do, right? All right, let's keep going. A Johnny Appleseed anniversary. Um, actually, no, we're not going to read that part. All right, so that's basically it. So make sure you, on your reading graphic organizer, you've uh, written these down and you wrote down what they really mean. Now all you have left to do is draw a picture of what these mean in each box. You can use your crowns, color pencils. I do not want you to use marker because on the back there's things that we have to do and the marker will bleed through and you're going to make a huge mess. Um, but that's all you're doing today for reading. Okay. Sorry about the long lesson and I'm sorry that it cut off, but it is what it is, right? All right. I'll see you later. Bye.